Greetings, I'm Brian from RC Work Boat Haven. In this video, I'd like to show you how you can make your own turnbuckles, a miniature version of this. You can do it yourself without any elaborate machinery. You can do it cheaply and without spending too much time on the project. Thanks for watching. This is my RC sailboat. We have a different requirement for RC workboat models. On an RC workboat like this schooner, you want the standing rigging to be black and the running rigging to be tan colored. These are the turnbuckles on the Haven 34 trawler. They can be unscrewed with one hand. And the mast can be folded down. So here's a fairly uh, rough drawing of the turnbuckle. A flat piece of copper has three holes drilled in it and that forms the eye. The copper is bent to fit over the head of a three millimeter bolt. Holding the bolt against the copper is a nut. The three millimeter bolt extends into the barrel of the turnbuckle and there's a lock nut. The turnbuckle at the other end here has a swivel and that swivel prevents this wire from pulling out of the end of the turnbuckle. At the end we have two crimp sleeves that will use that wire to crimp on rigging or any other line for any other purpose. The overall length of the turnbuckle from the end of the eye to the end of the barrel is about one and a half inches. Any of these dimensions could be changed but you're probably going to have to stick with a three millimeter diameter bolt for this particular uh, design. The take up inside the barrel is about halfway so that would make it one quarter of an inch. And that's, that's plenty for uh, RC workboat models. The key component to the turnbuckle is a tiger tail choker necklace available from the dollar store. This necklace has a thread in one end that is three millimeters. The other end has a ball crimped onto the wire. Both these wire crimps will withstand about 10 pounds before they break. So we're going to use the end with the swivel and we're going to replace the other end with a three millimeter bolt. Each turnbuckle requires one necklace. You can buy these at the dollar store for about a dollar, or you can buy 24 off eBay for 50 cents each. Each turnbuckle will require one three millimeter bolt about three quarters of an inch long. We'll need two three millimeter nuts. We're going to need one single hole crimp sleeve, cord, this will be for the uh, standing rigging, and we're going to need one two hole crimp sleeve to hold the standing rigging into an eye at the top of the mast for example. All these items can be purchased on eBay and in the description I'll post eBay searches that should help anybody at least find these products or similar products and you can compare prices but they're very inexpensive. The other item we're going to need is a piece of copper plate. 
This is available for most hobby stores. And we're using 0.025 thou thick. We're going to use that plate and cut strips and drill a few holes. So, uh, part that forms the eye of the turnbuckle. So that's what we need to get going. The first step is to measure and mark a 5 16 strip. Now using some shears, cut along the line, flatten the piece out, now file the edges just a little bit. We're going to make a sample out of this first piece. Measure three quarters of an inch in from one end of that strip. With a center punch, put one hole in the center of the strip at that mark. Now set a pair of dividers at seven sixteenths of an inch. Turn it around. So now we'll center punch each one of those marks. Now we have three accurate places to drill three holes here. Lift it up to the drill and then down. We've got three accurate holes. Put a little 45 degree angle on it. It's not really critical. There we go. Just give it a little bit of a, a rounding with a file here. And that's good enough for now. So what this is going to be is our sample. So let's mark it. S. Sample. So the first thing that we can do with this sample is use it to make a mark on the plate to get the, to get the width of the next strip. Just put a block or something there so that it doesn't, so that you know that you're, uh, you're on the edge and make a mark. Get a straight edge on it. There's one. I've cut six strips of copper here. I've straightened them out, flattened them, and I've lightly filed the cut along the edge. So now we're going to use a small sample and mark the holes on the strips. The copper scratches very easily, so you'll be able to see it. So to do the next one, make sure you leave enough space right in here for the end. That looks good. Hold it down. Mark it. It'll be fairly easy to see those little circles and center punch in each spot accurately. So now they're ready to drill. So now I have the three millimeter holes all drilled. I'm going to be painting these turnbuckles flat black. So before I cut them, I'm just going to go over each strip of copper with some sandpaper and rough it up. Just as we made the first sample, we can now cut each piece of copper off, trim off the ends, just round off the corners. It just takes a few seconds. Next, take the three millimeter bolt and pass it through the center hole. Put on the nut and tighten it. So now I have a supply of turnbuckle eyes and I have plenty of spares over here. So next step, let's form the eye out of the copper strip.
using a pair of pliers leave a slight gap in here so that when we turn it 90 degrees like this it'll clear the bolt head now we have a u-shaped piece clamp down approximately like that with another pair of pliers bend out the two sides so we have a piece like this now carefully try to press the two sides together evenly Just work on it a little bit. Now hold the eye like this and tighten up that nut because it will have loosened while we were bending. I use a little hand drill here with a three millimeter bit and I just run it through the hole to clean it up. I get a knife and just open it up A tiny bit right here. Next step is to screw the barrel lock nut on. Is take a necklace, undo the clasp, take a turnbuckle. Screw it in until it reaches the end. Finger tight the lock nut. I'll be using these single barrel crimp sleeves. So I'm just going to line it up here on the wire end. Bring my cutter over to the edge here and cut it off that should be about right just a little bit extra here and this is the basic turnbuckle we can crimp anything we want onto the end of this line So now I'm going to cut them all to the right length and then we'll get some black paint on these and move on to the next step. In the turnbuckle plan, I show rigging crimped directly onto the necklace wire. So I'll show you how I do that first. First step is to cut a piece of standing rigging out of uh, the cotton nylon cord. Give it a good stretch. After you cut it, make sure you give it a little bit of a curl with your finger and a lighter. The wire on these turnbuckles has a coating of some kind of plastic. So when these are cut off, they can leave a little bit of a, an end on it that snags a bit when you try to uh, put everything together. So I like to just give it a little bit of heat like that and give it a twist. And it makes the uh, end a lot smoother when you push it in. Put the crimp sleeve over the end of the cord. And then... Press in the wire on the turnbuckle. Crimp the sleeve and work your way along. So that's not too bad for our first one. So that is the method that I prefer when I'm putting standing rigging on my models. But there are other ways to do this. So let me show you the next method. Another way to do it is to take that small bit of wire we've left on the end and bend it around double. So now this is crimped onto the small loop we made on the wire, just at the end of the crimping sleeve. The other end, we'll put in a vise and flatten it out. And you can just drill a hole. 
Another method is to put the sleeve on the end of the wire and then screw in an eye. So here's the sleeve with an eye screwed in and we can now crimp that. So now we've got the barrel, the sleeve, and just a standard hardware store eye crimped into the end of the sleeve. So we've got a turnbuckle now with two eyes. So just to sum up the three methods that I've shown, and I'm sure there are many more, the first one is a two millimeter nylon cotton cord crimped onto the wire with the crimp sleeve. The second method here is the crimp sleeve crimped onto the turned over wire and then flattened at the other end and a hole drilled in it. The third method is to use a standard screw eye and screw it in up against the wire inside the crimp sleeve. So those are just three methods that could be used with the, with the uh, turnbuckle and the crimp sleeve at the end. Traditional RC work boats require a lot of rigging. So let's use this little jig here and do a little bit of standing rigging. One of my favorite parts. The turnbuckle eyes are fastened to eyes up forward and chain plates further aft. They're secured with three millimeter bolts and nuts. So let me show you how easy it is to fasten this piece of standing rigging at the end of the bowsprit. The first step is to loosen off the barrel of the turnbuckle until it comes off. Then thread it on just a few turns and move the nut down to, to, uh, to lock it in place. Get a lighter and heat up the end of the cord. So that it tapers slightly. Using a two barrel sleeve with a two millimeter hole inside. Push the sleeve through and loop the cord through the eye at the top. Push your cord down through the other side of the sleeve and pull it tight. At the bottom, undo the turnbuckle and crimp the sleeve. And there we have a nice round crimp, which can be painted black later. And because everything is so easy to remove down at the bottom end, it's easy to paint. Just swivel it around like this. So now, down at the bottom, thread the barrel back on to the turnbuckle. Easy to remove, easy to touch up with paint, and easy to repair. So let's get a knife and cut this off. So here's the standing rigging on our jig. It's not quite ready for sea. <laughs> the economics of building your own parts like these turnbuckles are obvious. This Great Lakes hooker requires 15 turnbuckles. The trawler requires five turnbuckles and the schooner requires 26 turnbuckles. The material cost to make these turnbuckles is less than a dollar. In an upcoming video, I'm going to put running rigging on this little rigging jig, and we're going to need both single and double blocks. I'll show you how you can make them for pennies and the actual sheaves inside the blocks turn. So don't miss that one. Subscribe today.
Thanks for watching.